that's the nature of life. You never know what you're gonna get. You just live through it and hopefully in the middle of your mess, you don't miss the message. We're live. Derek is in the building. Happy Monday. How you doing, my brother? Man, I'm, I'm excited to be alive, man. It's a great day to be alive. Good to be here with you, man. And uh, thank y'all for having me on. Amen. And like your whole vibe and just personality just screams somebody that's out here trying to make the best of every single day, that's trying to look at the bright side of things, that's trying to make other people understand and see you know, the positivity and just the overall grind and work ethic and mentality. So I mean, I'm, it's an honor, man. It's an honor to share the stage with you. And uh, where are you based again? Oh, so I'm in, I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee, man. Originally from Atlanta in Knoxville, Tennessee. Did a lot of moving in between, but yeah, home is Knox. You were always on the move? Oh, always on the move. It was, you know, one of those um, by choice or by force. So I, I think it was a little bit of both that, that helped us move around a lot. And finally, we got to this, this destination. So I'm excited for where I'm at, man, but more excited for where we're going. Amen to that. And for you personally, it, it, it was the athlete journey that tended to have you moving around, correct? Well, from the growing up um, in Southwest Atlanta, being raised by a single mom, that journey to put your kids in a position to be more, do more, have more to that athlete vehicle of, hey, can, this can change my family's life um, journey is kind of what, what, what took the second transition of, of the moving around. But for the most part, man, it was really just that, 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 you given dealt these cards and you got to play the hand the best you can to make it happen. So that was more of the, the, the front end of the journey, man. Do you have siblings? Yeah, I got siblings. I got, actually it's, it's like, it's all convoluted from my mom. I got an older sister and a younger brother. And then from my um, dad, I got an um, older, uh, older sister and then one just pretty much six months behind me. So that's called Irish twins. And then from my stepdad, um, I got two other siblings. So I got, I got a whole little um, Brady bunch, if you will, bro. Brady. I mean, <laughs> that, that's amazing. I mean, that must definitely be an interesting, you know, and, and challenging experience just growing up, single mom, like going through that whole process. Do you feel like that kind of left like scars or, or like put you in a position where, you know, you, you wanted to just like work harder just because you've had that early struggle? Man, I believe everything you're growing through is preparing for where you're going to. Um, so your past can either be your crutch or your catapult. Um, for me, going through the adversity and the challenges and, and the difficult times, honestly, it just made it my catapult because I had been through some stuff and I knew what I didn't like and I, what I didn't want from life. So as I got older and I could control those controllables, um, I knew it was up to me to make everything else happen. So honestly, it was probably one of the biggest blessings in disguise because a lot of times, man, if you don't, if you don't grow through anything, you, you, you tend to settle, but if you don't been through some stuff, you know how to push and um, you, you can, you can fight through because you know, there's, there's more to, to, to be done, more to be had, more to see on the other side. So it was a big thing, blessing in the sky for me, honestly, man. It's interesting that when you go through struggle and you go through hardship and all this stuff, it makes you so inspired to want to live your life in a way that allows all the luxuries you didn't have, say for your kids or for your spouse or just for your friends it's like you appreciate it on such a hard level. And the more and more I think about it, you know, obviously people that are just born into luxury and wealth and ha you just, everybody has a chip on their shoulder, like, man, that must be nice. But the more and more I see it, those people just aren't as happy. They're just not as, you know, excited and appreciative of, of life. Now that doesn't go for everybody, right? Like there's no like master rule, but the struggle definitely keeps us happy as people, right? Like just keeps us True. feeling good and we're moving forward in the right direction. And this is something that means something. It's like, I went through this really, really crazy health journey recently. And, you know, one thing was like from the physical nature, I mean, you're a football guy, you work out all the time, you know, you're in great shape. You know, I had this, this uh, tumor, it wasn't cancerous, you know, thank God things are good, but it was a tumor in my left leg. And it was on my sciatic nerve. And mm. I didn't know it for over a year, uh, almost two years. We couldn't figure out like what was the root cause. But I lost so much weight. and went down to like 152. You know, I'm 6'1". Like that's not cool. Right. Uh, just skin and bones. Couldn't work out. Couldn't run. And you know, like if you can't 
go to the gym. Like it just F's with your head, you know? Right. But now like I've been back at the gym for the last three weeks. I'm 46 days post-surgery and I am just on cloud nine. I'm like, I, I've never loved the gym more. You know, I'm going like all day. I'm the skinniest guy in there, but I got the biggest smile. Like, you know, these, these, all the girls there can live more weight than me, right? Like they're, 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 they're hitting the stairmaster, master. And I'm just like, what's up? What's up, man? You, you see this? This is an appreciating asset right here. You know, That's it. But bro, it's like that love, you you know what I mean? That's it, I, I, bro, congrats on, on, on making through that journey. But I, I, I tell you this, man, that's that's called perspective, bro. You, you got some perspective on it. You, you can appreciate the struggle now. Um, I think going through something like that, man, just give you a perspective on how worse things could be and how good things really are. And if you ain't really been through nothing, you can have somebody – post something on your Instagram or not like your page. And now all of a sudden the world comes to an end if you ain't been through nothing. Um, but if you done been through some stuff, you realize that's not even real life. That's fake life. So that, that right there alone, bro, and hats off to you on, on that journey, bro. But also for, for, for coming through on the other end of that thing with the right perspective, because your story alone, is going to give somebody else hope. Um, that they can, that they can overcome whatever it is maybe facing, but they don't know what it is. So hats off to you. Cause whatever you went through, it wasn't just for you. Um, it, it was, it was, it was for a whole lot of other people, man. So, so I appreciate you for sharing that with us, man. Yeah. I like I like that you share that too. And the way your perspective of wording that, because I think the word here that is really interesting is empathy. Like if you don't go through it, you don't have like true empathy. Cause you know, it's hard to try to say, I know how you feel, bro. When you don't like, right. you have no idea. Right. And one of the issues, like I had a host of other health issues that I'm going to get into on a future podcast. But one of the big things that always clouded my mind was like, I never knew a world like this existed until I felt it. Like somebody who's blind, you can't say, I know how you feel because you have no idea, you know, like somebody that's going through, you know, even an earlier situation, like just growing up with, you know, in in a tough childhood or just like in a tough household, like they just don't know, right? Like you want to know, you, you want to believe good. Like I understand, like yo comprende, but you don't. And right. just to be able to like go through any sort of traumatic experience to come out the other end, just to kind of have a little bit more of a hint of that empathy is, is probably like a really special gift in a twisted way, right? True story. You, you're right. It, it, it's, it's, it's that blessing in the skies that you don't really know until – until until you until you done been through it, and um, that's the nature of life, man. That's the nature of life. You never know what you're gonna get. You just live through it, and hopefully, in the middle of your mess, you don't miss the message. Because a lot of times we go, th- we we got a lot of messes that we go through, but sometimes we we miss the message, man, and we we we, we miss that empathy. We miss the, the the thing we're supposed to take from that mess. So we end up going through all these other challenges along life, and end up in the same place because we miss the message every single time. But if we if we are aware enough to pay attention to what's that mess or what's the message in the middle of that mess, bro, that just allows us to grow um, and become the person that we truly here to be. So it's it's all a part of it, man. It's all a part of it. We just got to do our job and be aware. Yeah, and and so tell me a little bit about your your football journey. So uh, when just looking through your stuff, I really like how you positioned your branding, your coaching, your whole mission around this transition. And this period of going from what I can only assume, like being in any sort of professional football setting must just be the ultimate adrenaline rush. Like you got all the homies in the locker room, great friends, and that become family. And you're probably being told a lot what to do in terms of schedule. And that must just be so awesome because you, you can just kind of go with the flow. And all of a sudden when it goes away, uh, I this is maybe a little bit far fetched, but it must kind of feel like a little bit similar to when somebody like kind of gets out of prison in a while. Right. In the sense, cause they just don't know what Same to thing. do next. Same. You, you hit it right on hit. Honestly. And, and that's why I named my company sports life business because it happens in sports. It can happen in life. It can happen in business in, in sports. My mind was football, but it can be basketball. It can be tennis. It can be track and be soccer. Cause you put your life into doing that in life. You, you could be a parent, and all you know is raising your kids. And then all of a sudden they move out the house and you're an empty nester and you're not sure what you're supposed to do, what you're supposed to operate, because you've been doing that for 18 years. Or you could be in the corporate world and you've been in this one role, this one position with this one company or just in that company and moved on up. And then all of a sudden 2020 happens and, and they got to cut people and you get let go 
And that's your identity because that's what you've been doing for the past 20 years. So you don't even know what's next. You don't know who you are outside of what you do. So with that football journey, man, you gr growing up and seeing football as a vehicle that could change my family's life, going into my, um, after moving from, from Southwest Atlanta down to Griffin, Georgia, my mom finally getting married and, and, and having help so we don't have to have raise three kids by ourselves. Um, life changing um, to the degree for the better. And then getting one of those elements of surprise because my stepdad got this raise and this promotion, but they didn't tell us that it was going to be a move to Arkansas. And then when we have to move to Arkansas from Georgia, I get to Arkansas. I'm like, bro, ain't nothing in Arkansas for me. So at this point, I, I got I to gotta figure this thing out. And at that point, I realized sports could be that stage in that vehicle that can help me change my life and control my life. Well, when I got there, um, I, didn't, I wasn't even sure what sport I was the best at. So I ran track. And then track felt like punishment. So I told coach, you know, I said, I, I don't think track made for me because I don't feel like running like that. Um, I played basketball, but we happened to go to Atlanta for Christmas break during basketball season. And I missed practice in a couple games. And I come back and the coach was like, hey, you got to run 500 bleachers before you can be back on the team. And at that point, I told him, I don't like basketball that much. So that by default narrowed down to just football. And I had to take football serious because that was my only vehicle that I could use. So we got locked in. I came up with me a get out of Arkansas plan. And um, that was the first goal I ever made in my, made in my life. And um, it was rushed for 2,200 yards, 20 touchdowns, and take the school to their first state championship. I figured if I did that, by default, they'll get attention and I'll get attention. And I'll get the full ride scholarship um, to Georgia, which was who I was planning on going. And sure enough, man, that season came around. We went 1-0, 2-0, 3-0, 4-0, all the way up to 11-0, one game before the state championship game and we end up losing. Um, and, and I was frustrated and mad, but I started getting these letters in the mail of interest, and I knew that the game plan was working. All I had to do was just do it one more time. So that was my game plan. So that summer, I had a chance to visit um, University of Georgia, had a chance to visit Michigan State, Ohio, all these different schools. And um, my last school I visited was Arkansas, which I wasn't planning on going there anyway. Um, come back from that camp, and come to find out I had tweaked my knee a little bit at that camp. So season comes up, get ready to get started. And my knee was still bothering me. I go get to the doctor and it was a meniscus tear. So they say I got to have surgery, um, which has put me out about three weeks. So I go have the surgery. And when I wake up during the surgery process, um, right after it ended, I'm getting rolled out of the operating room and I felt this brace on my leg and they come to find out they had repaired my ACL. So if you know anything so about they didn't they didn't know it at the time but like while they're under the knife they're like oh shit your your acl is effed up did you have an mri before i did what i needed to do and they said that it was the meniscus tear and when they got in and they seen that the acl was partially torn so he went on and repaired it and at that point right there that football season was over done i was irrelevant on the football landscape crushed i woke up mad angry frustrated because it didn't hurt me and I, 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 I never know if it was tour. I just got to go off what they say. So that, that part right there, all those football scholarship opportunities I had and meetings I had with, with these coaches and teams went from up to about 12 down to zero. So now I was back at ground zero, square one, trying to figure this thing out, man. And that's when life kind of hit me. And you're at the bottom again. You got to figure this thing out. And I questioned everything. It was like, why me, Lord? Why me? And I said, you got to be careful when you ask that question because sometimes you get an answer you might not be ready to hear. And sure enough, I was doing some rehabbing one day, rehabbing three times a day. And I was asking why me, mad, frustrated. And um, I heard him say, I gave you that stage for the glorification of my kingdom and you was using it for your own purpose, selfish ambitions, reasons, and goals. So I had to take it away from me to get your attention. And at that moment right there, I realized this thing was bigger than me. Um, it wasn't really about me. I was here for something bigger than me. I just wasn't sure what it was, or how to use it. And Sure enough, man, I just stopped focusing on myself. At least I tried to anyway. Um, rehabbed. And track season came back around. Of course, I ended up running track because I ain't had nothing else to do. <laughs> I, <laughs> I couldn't play nothing else. And um, sure enough, in that, that, that track season, I got a letter in the mail um, from the University of Tennessee, a place I never visited, a place I never even really watched. I watched them play one time. They was playing against Georgia, and I was rooting for Georgia. And, man, they invited me to come up to come visit the team and come meet the coaches. Went up there and visited the team, met the coaches, and they said, look, um, we heard about your injury, and unfortunately, um, we know how good of a player you are, but we can't give you a full scholarship right now. 
but we saw you on film against some guys that are coming here. And if you rehab and you come back to be the player that you once were before, we got a full scholarship waiting on you. I just said, sign me up. I don't know if they knew anything that I had, no options waiting on me anymore, but I just said, sign me up. And at that point, it was back to go earn this thing all over again. And um, that's what kind of locked me into just understanding the process and just being locked in to do the work, man. Um, Cause the goal got altered. That, that pivot happened kind of like 2020 hit, like that, that unexpected thing happened where I got, I had to, I had a goal, but the plan that I thought I was going to take in the course I, I had charted for myself, it was altered. Um, so I ain't know no, I ain't know nothing else but to work, man. Just like growing up when we, my mom was raising us, she never settled. She never quit. She never folded, even though the cards, she, she played the cards that she was dealt. Like it was the hand that she always wanted. So I was playing those cards that I was dealt when my injury happened. Like it was the hand I always wanted. I knew I had this goal. I knew I wanted to win the game. I knew I wanted that scholarship. So I just kept playing the cards to the best of my ability. And after getting to the university of Tennessee, I'm um, two years in, I got that full ride scholarship, bro. And um, the, re- the rest is history. Yeah. It's interesting how different people just grow up because I mean, when I played sports in college, you know, I kind of understood what scholarships were like, Oh, full ride scholarship sounds pretty good. But like, to me, it wasn't like the end of the world. Right. I knew that if I wanted to go to a college, like I likely would be like, okay to go, you know, I was blessed with that opportunity just growing up with my family, but just to under like just talking through how anyone else when like, that they're going through that uprising, they know that the scholarship is like the path towards success. And it's like ingrained in your head at such a small age, at a young age. But I feel like everything's changed now. I think that with YouTube and the internet and Google and remote working and coronavirus, scholarships are no longer like this path towards greatness that you need to take, right? Bro, college not even the path toward greatness that you need to take, bro. If, if it wasn't for football, I probably wouldn't have went to college. I know, not, not even probably, wouldn't have, period. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so you, you're speaking right on some real stuff, bro. That, 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 that system old. It's interesting, too, because it's getting more and more exposed every single day with, like, the NCAA strikes and just, like, all of these systems that have been going on for so long. And there's halting on, like, a large basis. And people are asking why, but other people are asking, like, about time, right? Right, 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 right. Definitely about time. Definitely about time. All that stuff is old, bro. It's, 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 out, it's outdated. Outdated. I always said, like, I true, I, I love this podcast deal, right? Because, like, not only, like, I, I teach podcasting, like, I love podcasting just because, like, I like meeting people and, like, talking to humans because every single time you do, you get a new perspective, you make a new friend, new connections, everything. But I think that if every, you know, college, if every you know, junior high school and high school student was forced to start a podcast where they reached out to inspiring people from around the world just to get them on a conversation. I think that they would get inspired enough to just go and change their life forever. Because for me, it's like when I meet certain people, like by the end of it, I'm just like, oh shit, like I need to get my website better. Like I need to get my money up. I need to I need to get a better car. Like I need to really change my life. You know, I need to attract, I need to attract some love, man. I'm screwing this up. Like, you know, you get these feelings after you talk to somebody that you just don't get by reading a book or like when you see someone walk in the walk, it gets yeah. me excited. Like there's this chick plastic free mermaid. Uh, she's amazing. Um, just in, like, that's her like nickname on, on Instagram, but she lives a plastic free lifestyle and you hear all over the news climate change if you don't believe in it damn right 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 like, pretty big deal right but she actually lives a lifestyle where she you know makes her own toothpaste out of like baking soda and some weird stuff but you know wow. you're talking to her and you're like wow this is like inspiring it's not realistic for everyone but seeing people do it and like making those connections and making it real and not just like a youtube video on the internet changes your life right right that's strong man yeah plastic free man i wish that yeah that sounds real good. I try I mean, to do pla- my part the plastic, here. <laughs> the plastic situation is so tough, right? It's like you go, you get some takeout, and it's like you got some plastic holding your chicken. That plastic in that chicken goes in a plastic bag with the plastic silverware. See, that's why I don't leave that, leave, that chicken, leave that chicken alone, man. Leave that chicken alone, bro. <laughs> there it is. Vegan. Veggies only. Plant life forever, baby. <laughs> I tried. I tried plant life, and I think it's definitely amazing. Like, I think all 
there's a lot of different ways of doing it and i'm probably like 80 percent plant right I, that, that will go. That will go. but I, uh i definitely don't eat nearly as much red meat anymore um yeah just because it just doesn't make me feel good but yeah. uh i respect people that are are about the vegetarian and, and vegan type of movement because yeah. it's just clearly better for the in the environment in so many different ways see i, I was selfish i was trying to be better for me in, in my body and then once it's the help of my body then it made it easy to, 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 to make it better for the environment <laughs> that's awesome and that's cool that like nature just hooked it up like that like yo by the way this new this new protein is damn good you don't need that weight no more <laughs> that's it that's it man that's real that's so real <laughs> and then there's like all the vitamins like i had this stomach issue called SIBO, and, and we'll get into that later but i was taking all these vitamins for so long and like supplements and just like really learn it. like when you really are in pain and, and you're suffering and you just like need something to end you'll kind of believe anything anyone says because you just want it to change right and i don't think people have bad intentions in that industry and just like health and wellness in general but it steered me into a direction where i was trying so many different things and i feel like so much of it is that snake oil because you just yeah. You're taking all these pills and then like there's the the argument whether a pill is even as a or like, not. Exactly. Exactly. The liquid deal. You know, I'm yeah. I'm I'm pretty much on the liquid chain a hundred percent, you know. Yeah, yeah. If it ain't enzymatically alive, bro, and, and not absorbable, but you, you you're consuming it, but you're 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 um disposing of it at the same time. So your money just went in and out. So yeah, yeah, you gotta you just a little education. You know how that go, bro. Do you uh do you take vitamins on like a daily basis? Um, not really vitamins. I take, um, superfood plants. Um, so in a supplementation form, it's the plant Moringa. And then outside of that is superfood, um, protein mix, all plant-based stuff. So I've, I've had that journey. I had that journey during college when I was playing ball. Um, and that's how I cut out red meat my sophomore year. And then went to two legs or less going into my junior and senior year. And then after that, I, I, I've been, I like, I like plants, bro just because how my body responded. So you, do you like, do you, you grow plants? You got, are you planted? Nah, out? I, I, don't, I don't grow them. I just go get them from the, from the store or from the farmer's market. So yeah. You got to start, you got to start growing yeah. plants. Plants, plants are amazing. They are. I, I got to see if I start, I got to be able to keep them alive. So that part right there, that's, uh, I know my lane. So I try to stay. <laughs> It's so true. It's so true. It's like your commitment to, it's like, Hey, you want a dog? Well, let's see if you can keep a plant alive first, you know? Right. right. It's like some red flags. It's like, she wants a baby. Well, I don't know. Their plants are dying, man. It's red flag. Exactly, bro. I pay attention to that, man. The game taught me well. Pay it, know what you're good at. Know what you're not good at. Stay in your lane or, or, or build a team around those things that you're not good at. So, until I figure out how, who, who, who's going to be best at growing plants, I ain't getting no plants. My wife her and plants don't work out that well together either. She's good at cooking them, but keeping them alive, nah. Yeah, there's this, uh, speaking of red flags, there's this game called Red Flags, and it's hilarious. I don't, I don't know if you ever played Cards Against Humanity. It's just like yeah. uh, always a yeah. good time, right? But then this game, Red Flags, the whole concept is you're trying to get the person to the left of you on a date, right? So you get two like white flags that are like good qualities and then red flags, which, which are bad qualities. So you'd be like, listen, girl, you know, this man, you know, this man is a millionaire. And at the same time, he's got 1000 acres in, in the, you know, Australia coral reefs, right? And then, like the red flag is, but every time he sees you, he headbutts you. You know, oh my <laughs> and you play this game, and it's so funny red um, because flag. it's like just hilarious. I just needed to tell everyone in the audience, like if you're looking for a good time, I think it's like thirty bucks online. Buy the game on Amazon. Red flags. It's amazing. Gotcha. I keep that in mind. We'll add that to the, add that to the to the to the board game. We, we, we play we play Monopoly deal a lot. So yeah, Monopoly. Monopoly deal. It's a card game. Monopoly in a card game. Talk about some real life economics. Phew. They, they should be taught in school. Interesting. How does it compare? It's like faster. Monopoly? It's, it's faster. Um, it takes brain power and you got to pay attention. But as far as like checks and balances or, and financial literacy and economics, it's, it's, it's legit. It's, I, I would do it in just trying to explain it over this, bro. But I, I, I it's, it's, you can take it with you too. Monopoly, the board game, it's too much going on. But the, 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 the cards, yeah, on point. 
That's really cool. Uh, it's interesting. Like when you learn something that you're passionate about, you just learn it so quickly and fast. Like for me, I was, when I was younger, I was really into fish, like coral reefs. And I still am today, but I was really big into the aquarium lifestyle. Right. And I had, you know, tons of fish tanks leading up to a 125 gallon saltwater tank with like the sump and everything. I, I found Nemo over and over again. Wow. And I, start, I started this business like cleaning fish tanks and I was charging 50 to 60 bucks an hour. I'd go to some stranger's home and be like, hello, I'm here to clean that tank. And I'll be like, "Woo, that thing is dirty. You know, I'm like 16, but I'm loving it. I'm pat, I'm stoked on it. And now like forever, I have so much knowledge about tanks, aquariums and fish. The point about this whole story is I was excited about looking at a little fish swim back and forth. And like, I think a lot of people in this world just don't find what they're excited about. And they're not looking at other things like in terms of the athlete world, right? I wish I could go back in time and like the three sports I probably would have played is golf because you can, you can do it forever. Tennis because you can do it forever and probably just continue to play some ping pong or something, but like sports that are timeless, right? That like keep you moving because I, I, you know, I'm 28 right now and you know, I'm still in the like a prime of your life, right? That's like a mindset, right? Right, right. Every year you just keep growing, you keep getting older and you keep facing more challenges and people said the body changes, but then you see people like Mike Tyson, what, he's like 65? Bro. He is ripped. It's all in here, bro. It's that all mindset head. deal t- is just insane. And also like throughout that, ba- like that whole previous journey with the leg thing, I, so I had um, bulging discs and like that was a red flag the whole time because it, it, it was a red herring, excuse me. And it screwed up my whole healing process because I was treating something that was never actually causing any problems, right? right. But I learned a lot about backs and yeah. I read like eight different books about the back and how to stop back pain. I just did not, I hated <laughs> being that guy. That's just always being a chiropractor back, now. You know? <laughs> oh Yeah. <laughs> But it's interesting because like one of these books explained that there's this culture um, that is just, you know, a a poor, you know, culture in a third world country that when they're collecting, say, almonds or whatever it is they're collecting, the way they're leaning is like they pick stuff up, but in a certain motion where these these people like 90 years old and their backs are perfect Mm. and they're like or ergonomically just built well because of the form that they're using to pick stuff up. Like that technique. blows my mind. Technique, bro. That's, that's like lifting weights. The proper technique, you can lift a lot of weight. Wrong technique, you're going to hurt some stuff, man. So, yeah, that's, that's the name of the game, man. That's awesome to hear that. I never heard about that culture, but that's so true because that comes down to the weight room stuff all the time, bro. Technique, literally. And I right? think there's, there's also other cultures, too, that like, it's very common for people. It might be India. I got to fact check. Don't fact check me and I got to check. But there's these certain cultures that people just live to their like 100 plus like on the reg. Italy. Italy. Okay. Sanitarians. That's that's crazy. Sanitarians. Yeah, I want to be one of those. (laughs) My wife looks at me funny whenever I say that. We we watched the the, um, Down to Earth documentary or a series and it was um, the Blue Zone. That's the zones they live in. Stress-free have a certain diet but yeah 100 100 plus on the regular yeah the blue zones so real i'm so I'm, real I'm, I'm about that life right there bro man imagine that it's just like <laughs> when you grow up and you have all these pains and god forbid you're gonna probably get some crazy diseases and life hits you right like there's things we can control there's things we can't control like one thing we can control is with the whole covid deal um everybody when they wake up they should be taking three supplements zinc is one of them vitamin vitamin c and uh vitamin d right so vitamin d is the most important one from what i understand is and this is i heard this from joe rogan's podcast i'm just stealing this little play for yeah you. i heard it from the doctors that said it probably on joe rogan's podcast so you're absolutely right yeah, yeah. and like it's i think the stat was 96 percent of people that had covid had a deficiency in vitamin d mm. So like, if you're not outside getting sun, just like take a supplement like that puts you in, that's a pretty damn good stat. Like, why aren't they just putting that all over the billboards? Vitamin D baby, like everybody. It it, it ain't meant to be put on the billboards like that, man. You know, you know how this go. Imagine like, imagine it's like Girl Scout cookies and like, you just like send off your kid and he like rolls up the door. 
Like, at least, uh, would you like some vitamin D? <laughs> that's it, bro. That's it. They it would kill the it. Problem. They would that's kill it. it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, mainstream media though, dictates how, how people think, though. So you know how that go. I want, that, that's got to be, like, illegal, right? Just, to, like, sell supplements. But Hey, man, it, it, it'd help a lot of people if, 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 the, if it was dictated that way to, to consume supplements. But that ain't the case. That would be a great making of a health guru. Yeah, when I was younger, I got arrested for selling vitamin D. <laughs> door to door <laughs> door to door that's it that's it the, the making of like anthony williams or anybody that's dr mark hyman some yeah. of these online internet entrepreneurs it's interesting in the health world because like to really make a killing you could be such a, a smart doctor but you got to get on youtube you got to start making those videos you got to be seen and you can make like a good video with incorrect knowledge and could get millions of views and, and live forever so yep. it's like when you do make a video, it's like that combination of making sure you get something that's effective and actually accurate and then doing it. Finding the fine line is how I have so much respect for full-time creators because like it takes so much creativity to just get yourself to do another video and operate and like video editors too, like man, their brains, it's crazy. True story. True story, bro. That, that, that's half of the, the journey as an entrepreneur, man, is, is having that type of creativity. Um, the consistency is going to be built. That's that you're going you're gonna to either have that or you ain't. But the creativity and then having that, the, the, the um, ability to make it look and feel and, and touch every single time effectively, man. Like you said, man, you can have that one hit wonder video clip, but it's that consistency that's going that's to separate it, man. Right. And then it, it, you start to get labeled by it. You start like your, once your friends start to see you in this new light, other people will start seeing you. Right. So like we teach people a lot to do online video, like go online and go live on Facebook. It's one of the, like the scariest things to do when you first do it, because you just assume like every single one of your friends is sitting there on their phone, just staring at you, like judging you, but it's just not the case. Right. And then once you, right. do, you realize like, yo, I'm not getting stung by a scorpion, like we're good. Um, but the idea of putting yourself out there is very liberating and free. You know what I mean? Very true. Very true. And what you got to think about for the most part, man, on, on, some, on some real life, it's probably only going to be five, ten people look at it anyway. So at this point, you just kind of got to, bro, just go do it. Like, go, go, just, you just got to keep doing it. And, and if you're lucky and if you do it right and you add enough value, it, more people look at it, but for the most part, it's, it's, it's in the doing, man. You just got to realize nothing's going to get done in, until you get that done. And, and you got this gift, this talent, this purpose, this mission, and you're not going to achieve that until you get that done. So it's, it's, it's doing that work going to outweigh um, this, this inferiority or this, this, this uncertainty of people looking at you or feeling some type of way. So you just got to do it, man. I think that's the, the separator of, um, those who, who, who make life happen and those who, who let life happen to them is those who just get in the trenches and just do the work. Um, right. It's like you got a miracle in your mouth, start sharing it. That's it, bro. That's it. And with your, and your whole um, Emma with this transition, can you tell me a little bit more about like what people go through? So you built this whole brand around the athlete experience specifically, but I'm sure it can apply to everything. Uh, about this transition period of, of going from like that scheduled everything and, and camaraderie into a different profession, um, whether that be a speaker or sportscaster. And, and it doesn't seem like there's too many like stationed, now that I think about it, like when I think of professional athletes, like the one or two main things that come to my mind is like a sports cast, like, like speaking on some sort of like show, right? Like right. doing something along those nature or, you know, like running like camps and things like that. Like there's not like, you don't see too many different stories about how that goes after. Cause it's, it's normally in a box and most, most athletes kind of put themselves in this box because culturally we're put in this box, but the whole concept of the transition, man, is transition in the mind as you transition the grind. So what I found is in athletics, tennis, football, track, soccer, swimming, volleyball, golf, you name it, there's some intangible transferable skills that you learn from playing sports that correlate in life and in business. And if you can take away what those things are and know how to correlate them and carry them over, 
you can have success in anything that you do. Because I, I firmly believe that once you reach this elite level in playing sports, um, you got some, 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 some hours and you've put in some reps that most people never get a chance to really do. So in athletics, I feel like I had a chance to practice my emotional intelligence. I had a chance to practice how I was going to respond to wins, how I was going to respond to losses, how I was going to respond to adversities, how I was going to respond um, to things going my way, how I was going to respond to things not going my way. I had a chance to practice that every single day in practice. And I had a chance to practice it until I got it right. So I'm getting these reps in daily, practicing sports, but really practicing life situations and practicing business, business situations. However, when I'm no longer, no longer playing, if I can say, okay, based off my athletic career, and I created this called transition formula for this, um, anything that you're growing through, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, figure out what, you can, what can you take away from it. So that's a T. So I got my T, that's my takeaway. When I figure out what I can take away from the, everything I done had and grow through in sports, the next thing I'm going to do is my C. So T plus C, this is correlate. How does those things and lessons and adversities and challenges that I have went through, those things I took away from it, how can I correlate those things to where I'm at right now or where I'm going in the future? Once I figure out how those things correlate, the next thing is the number C. So T plus C plus C equals carryover. How can I carry those things over and apply them right now? And if I figure that out right there, how I can carry them over and apply them, what that's going to do is give me a, a successful transition. So T plus C plus C equals ST. All I did was realize how to take those takeaways from sports, how I could correlate them um, into sales, because I got into sales when I was done playing. And when I figured out how to have success in sales, I asked myself, what made me elite in sports? So I took all those things from sports that made me elite, I applied them to sales, and all of a sudden, I figured out how to, how to carry them over, and I started having this success in my sales career, and I was able to teach people in my sales career, and I had a successful, successful transition into sales. So after having that successful transition into sales, after eight years, I knew I had the blueprint and I was, it made me mad and frustrated me that all the other athletes that was coming behind me wasn't able to do the same thing. So that's when I walked away, wrote the book, wrote the, created a curriculum and the programs, um, helping athletes transition, but at the end of the day, helping people transition because the mindset and that transition formula of T plus C plus C equals ST could be relevant in anything you do. Um, Cause the same things that I had learned from sports that I applied in sales, now I'm applying those to the business world, have my own business. Those same tangi intangible takeaways, those same skills, those same things I correlated, I just carried those right over to business. Learning how to sell my own product, learn how to sell myself just like I applied in sales, because I had to learn that in, in, in athletics to sell the coach that I need to be starting, to sell the coach that I need that scholarship. So everything carried over, however, it's never taught and it's never shown to us or, or put out in a playbook format or, hey, this is how you do it. So. I wanted to create that class, that book, that course that athletes can have, that it can show them how to do it, but even more people could have because I feel like you either in transition, just came out of a transition or a transition is on its way. And there's never been a format that show you, okay, this is what it looked like when I'm in transition. This is what it looked like when I just came out of a transition or if everything's all good right now, a transition is on its way. So let me be prepared for it. Mm. And, and that's kind of been the process that I've took and, and, and why I've created what I've created. But at the end of the day, man, I believe we, it, it, it's all in that transition formula. And a lot of times those two that have success transitioning, they follow those exact same steps, but they never have words for it. They can, they can describe it to help somebody else. All I did was put it in a formula where well, now you can go through it some with your transition, but I just give you the words or the formula for how to explain it to somebody else. Interesting. Yeah. That entire shifting of just who you are and like becoming comfortable in that situation and like loving this new you, you know, because the old you, you know, you might have been pretty good, but you know, this is Jones 2.0. It's like every time you upgrade and you make that transition, you're taking your past experiences, adding to your current experiences, getting wiser. You might not have a beard, but that thing's growing, Gandalfin. And That's you're just it. getting better and stronger and just mentally preparing yourself for more situations. What has been the biggest challenge for you personally in terms of building that coaching business, getting clients from the start? getting people to trust you and maybe getting like that first couple of, of victories in this world. Of course, the biggest challenge is just, is just marketing and promotion, man. If they don't know you, they can't flow you. So 
if, if the people that you, if your clients or the organization that you're looking to speak to or the business that you're going to speak in front of them or the, or the teams, and they don't know you, it don't matter how good your content is, they ain't going to do business with you. They can't hire you. They can't book you. You can't help them. So the biggest, the biggest challenge, of course, is always in promotion and marketing. But that comes a relationship that comes with time. You just got to stay consistent and continue, continue to deliver um, that content and add value. And if you add enough value, at some point in time, if you don't quit, the door going to come wide open for you, just like in football. I, I just kept on playing, just kept on playing, kept on practicing, got a scholarship, kept on playing, kept on practicing, it, it got a chance to play, kept on playing, kept on practicing, graduated, it, same, same concept. So um, quitting ain't a, not an option, it just, matter, it just takes time. You just got to go through the numbers and then just keep going through it. So it's a challenge and an obstacle, but it ain't really a challenge and an obstacle because I already know it. Like it's, it's our, I've already experienced it before. Interesting. Man, this has been good. It's, it's, it's interesting. Every, every single day, we all have a choice. You wake up, you make some moves, and you get after it, get inspired enough to do it. Because once you start doing it, it's easy to keep doing it. It's just like yep. the gym. Like getting there is the hardest part, but doing it is great. Or like if you're procrastinating on a task, the second you start doing it, you're like, oof, this is good. Like I'm in, I'm in flow, I'm moving, but just like getting yourself to do that first little thing screws up your whole day. Everyone's got the time. It's interesting because like in the direct sales world, I'm, I'm, I've been in that like my whole life. It's like, it always seems to be like the single mom with three kids that gets stuff done. Right. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's it. She, she, she they don't make a lot of excuses. You know, you just gotta, you gotta, just gotta maximize everything, every single second, every, you can't waste time and you can't get time back. So, um, that's one of the biggest things uh, I believe in make, make, maximize the moment, make the day count, win the day, man. Cause that, that, that last play might not be your best play, but if you're fortunate enough to be alive, you got to make the next play your, your best play. So your next move got to be your best move, man. You just got to roll. There it is. Got to stay rolling. And if you could go back in time and you could have like to the moment when you were in that transition period and you could have told yourself like one, two or three things besides the formula that would have just saved you a ton of time, money, headache or heartache, what would be like the older, wiser you? What, what would you would have told yourself? I probably just would have took more action faster like what I'm doing now I felt like I was doing it indirectly um I would have been more direct and 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 pursue the purpose and the mission um more 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 aggressively versus thinking I had to be established or waiting to time and to get right I just I just sort of took the action a whole lot earlier just making moves that's it yeah yeah Taking action. Action's the, the, the name of the game. It's Monday morning. It's 8.45 a.m. as we record this. Early day. We're getting after it. It's so nice to get a little W on, whether it be a podcast, whether it be a video, whether it be a walk in the morning. Like doing something that makes you feel extra proactive, that gets you into the flow. Maybe it's getting a coffee and listening to an audiobook. We live in a world where you can literally put some AirPods on and just consume content, learn something new every day. It's in so many great forms. You could look at something like Joe Rogan, the most popular podcast out there, and have a, you know, a comedy slash intellectual approach to, to learning. You can find someone that vibes with you, like Derek. If Derek's your type of tea, then you follow Derek, consume Derek's content. Not everybody is meant for everybody, right? right. Like the specifics are in the niche. If you vibe with that person, go all in with them and you know, motivate them, encourage them, like become part of the tribe. You know, and just make these make these goals happen, man. It's like, damn, like we're we're only aging quicker. Every every year, the three sixty five goes faster and faster, and everyone's always saying, "Well, next year I'm gonna do it." Well, ne- like I I'm on the like this is completely random, but I'm I'm gonna be getting a, a new place in two months in Miami, and I'm just on the fence. I think I'm gonna get two Bengal cats. You know, like yeah, a yeah. ridiculous thing. I'm I'm, I'm just <laughs> gonna be the daddy of two like. Bengal cats. It's going to be sick. And like, I feel like I got to do it. You know, if I don't do it, I'm going to regret it. Um, you know, I keep pushing it off, whether it's Bengal cats or getting a car or getting a new job or starting a business. If you're going to do it, do it, you know, That's enjoy it. your life. You know, you That's never know what's happening tomorrow. You feel me? True story, bro. Just do it. If you're going to do it, do it, man. That's, that's it. That, that's the name of the game, man. That is the name of the game. That is the name of the game. Hey, hats, I'll tell you with the Bengal cats, it's going to be fly. There it is. We got marble and we got fire. What you want, you know? That's it. That's People are it. Gonna be like, I'm looking for new counters. Can I use your cats as a reference? I'm like, here you go. <laughs> That's it. 
that's it. I love it. I love well, it. Well, Derek, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you sharing your insights. This is fun. It's uh, it's just great to 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 meet you and connect with you. And I'm looking forward to staying you know connected on your journey. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with the peoples on the Len Jones Party of Two podcast and where they can find you uh, and things of that nature? Man, thanks for having me on. Um, they can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Facebook at Derek, D-E-R-R-I-C-K, furlough, F-U-R-L-O-W, Jr., J-R. Um, I would say, follow me. I'd love to connect with you. And also, I just tell you, accept nothing, defy everything, and attack life. Boom. There it is. Till next time, my friend. Thank you for listening to another episode of Len Jones Party of Two. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review and subscribe to stay up to date on our new episodes. And remember, hope is not a strategy. Keep making moves. Till next time, peace.